One moving part, the rotor. In this cutaway model of the pump, we can see that the rotor is a circle of chambers which are open both at the top and the bottom. The head, with inlet and discharge, directs gas to and from a cone. The cone, with fixed inlet and discharge ports, directs gas into and out of the center of the rotor. When the rotor and cone are enclosed in the body, the pump is complete. The bearings are external, independent from whatever is moving through the pump. With this simple design, Nash pumps have operated for more than a century without unscheduled downtime. In this demonstration pump, you can see how. When the rotor begins to turn, it forms a rotating ring of liquid that follows the inner contour of the body. In this diagram, you can see that the rotor is offset in the body. That causes the liquid to recede from and then re-enter the chambers between the rotor blades with every revolution. Let's follow one chamber from the bottom of the body. As the body wall diverges from the rotor, the liquid recedes and creates a vacuum in the chamber. At the top, the body wall begins to converge, forcing liquid back into the chamber. When connected to your system, the vacuum created in the pump draws the gas through the inlet port of the cone, filling the chambers which move past the port, trapping the gas. As the body wall converges, liquid is forced back into the chamber, compressing the gas and expelling it out the discharge port as the chambers rotate over it. You can see that the liquid acts like a piston in an ideal cylinder. It requires no valves, no lubrication, and is subject to practically no wear. The pump delivers an uninterrupted flow of gas without pulsation. That's the Nash principle of evacuating or compressing gases. Your Nash representative can show you the benefits of a Nash system when applied to your process.